order. Point of order is reserved. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered by Mr. Issa of California. Page six, line two, strike and. Page six, line six, strike the period and an insert. The amendment will be considered as read. And the gentleman is, is uh, recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I begin, I ask unanimous consent that two articles be placed in the record. One that is entitled Guatemalan orders new travel social curbs as virus surges in that country. Uh, the second one, uh, uh, Shizeki, uh, uh stands by having employer vaccine illegal immigrants get, pa get a pass. Without objection. Mr. Chairman, since the last amendment was voted down, it makes this one all the more appropriate. Mr. Mr. Chairman, as you can see, this simple common sense amendment says if the president is to go forward and push and shove at the Constitution and tear at the very fabric of liberty for American citizens, requiring that firms that have more than 100 employees all be vaccinated uh, or face a, a fine of over $13,000, require that members of the military be vaccinated or be discharged and lose their retirement benefits, require, require, require CBC, uh, CP, CBP officers be vaccinated when in fact we do not vaccinate people who are brought into this country, and let me rephrase that, who come to this country illegally and are admitted, when in fact we're releasing them into communities, when in fact 35 Customs and Border Patrol officers have died from COVID, when in fact uh, these officers, uh, just uh, so far 9,800 uh, uh, Border Patrol officers and employees have tested positive for COVID, many of them directly the result of having to come in close contact with the massive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of undocumented workers who come, uh, undocumented persons who come into this country uh, and are released into our society, uh, often without notice to the communities. The idea that they would be released without being vaccinated is, is simply something we cannot uh, understand. And Mr. Chairman, as you consider the inevitability of, of your orders to not accept any uh, amendments, I would ask that you take a good look and ask the question, how could you be so inconsistent on the President's orders and ability when it comes to people who are being released into the community, particularly as the earlier article I put in, Guatemala is one of the major countries delivering uh, undocumented individuals to us is in fact surging. We would not, in the ordinary course, allow someone to fly into this country untested and unvaccinated from Guatemala if they came legally, and yet under current uh, law and current orders, that is exactly what is going to happen, not to a few hundred, but to over a million people who will be admitted this year based on the current trend and the current paroles. Mr. Chairman, this is common sense. It will not take down the bill. It is completely within the, the uh, intent and jurisdiction of the, this legislation, just like the last one. It will be ruled by the parliamentarian uh, to be germane and sufficient. But unlike the last one, we are actually going with the president and with his intent, but trying to make it at least consistent for the million plus people who will enter our country uninvited and be released into our communities. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. I recognize the gentlelady from uh, uh, California. Uh, first, I would like to withdraw my point of order, although. I saw um, my colleague, as we both landed at the airport yesterday around the same time, he suggested his amendment might not be germane, but it is germane. And so I withdraw my point of order. And uh, I urge opposition uh, to this amendment. Uh, as it turns out, the requirement for COVID vaccine has already been imposed uh, several weeks ago. 
as part of our health screening provision. There are also uh, waiver provisions uh, in uh, the existing law. Uh, I would just note that uh, I, you know, the important investments in this bill are what we should be discussing. If we are able to pass what is before us, this will make our country more prosperous. It's a very important investment that is before us. And uh, the, we've now spent almost two hours on COVID-19 uh, discussing whether, uh, you know, for the first time ever, a co you know, a vaccination would be required for our military when George Washington imposed it on the Continental Army. I mean, the right of an adult unvaccinated person to infect an eight-year-old. I wish we could get back to discussing the very important broad investments that are being proposed by the measure before us. Uh, this amendment should be it's not only uh, redundant, it's unnecessary, and it's also a diversion from the very important opportunity that we have uh, before us today. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would yield back. The uh, gentlelady yields. The gentlelady yields back. Who else seeks recognition? Mr. Tiffany. Mr. Chair. For what purposes, Mr. Tiffany, seek recognition? I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I speak in support of this amendment. I think it's a very important amendment. As someone who's been to the border twice now this year, um, down in the Rio Grande, but also went to Panama to see what was happening uh, firsthand down in the village of Bajo Chiquito, and I see that it's been picked up by some of the mainstream outlets now, the incredible surge of migrants that are coming from South America. Guess what Dr. Fauci is talking about is, uh, in regards to the next mutation? It is called the mu uh, strain or the mu um, form of the virus. And guess where it's coming from? It is coming from Ecuador and Colombia. Just south of Panama is the country of Colombia, and that's where people are coming up the pipeline all the way to the United States. And we saw it firsthand at Bajo Chiquito, a little village in the Darien Gap where people come from the, uh, through the Darien Gap, the jungle from Colombia into Panama, and you have this incredible surge of migrants that are coming up through that area, and what may they be carrying with them? So we have people that are going crazy in regards to Sturgis. They go crazy in regards to college football games and all these people getting together. My home state, the Milwaukee Bucks, had 65,000 people that gathered after they won their, or when they won their championship uh, in the NBA. But the Biden administration and Dr. Fauci are not talking about this at all. This is a really important time for us at the southern border because this strain could be moving from South America all the way into the southern United States. I just think this is a really important amendment um, to, uh, to pass here because I saw it firsthand down in Panama. Not only the health concerns, but we heard from the Panamanian foreign minister that there are huge national security concerns also. But when it comes to controlling the coronavirus, we need to uh, if you're going to be consistent, that we need to challenge it on all fronts, then it needs to be challenged on the front of the southern border also. Um, I urge uh, passage of this amendment from the gentleman. Would the gentleman yield? I will yield to the gentleman from California. Thank you. You know, the gentlelady from California is a good friend, and we were chatting yesterday, and I, I just wanted to make the point that it was actually a different amendment, one that we're not probably going to have time to offer. My apologies. But leaning back into the, her objection, I just want to make the point that all we're really saying is let's codify in this bill what the CDC intends to do, believes it should do. And I think the gentlelady made the point that if the CDC thinks it should be done, why wouldn't we make sure that it is done and not be arbitrarily waived or ignored? If it's, a, if it's this good an idea to mandate it for so many, and if the CDC believes that uh, all uh, people being uh, made residents, uh, including a vast amount that this bill may choose to uh, be covered, why would you not lean into what the CDC is saying? Why wouldn't this be the easiest one to accept? Uh, and I would uh, ask that 
you further lead, uh, yield to the gentlelady from California, hopefully, to answer. Yeah, I would just um, like to share a comment in regards to it, and I'll be happy to do that. Um, but um, uh, this is an opportunity for this committee to take this action. But I would urge the Biden administration to take this action also. This is actually something that may be legitimately within their purview that they could do rather than issuing vaccine mandates on Americans. And also, I would urge Dr. Fauci to get on board here. This is a, an instance where I think the American people would be behind you 100%. As you've seen your tr um, erosion of trust, Dr. Fauci, this is an, a, a, an instance where the American people would be fully behind you if you said, we do have to be concerned about the crush of people that are coming across our southern border. Uh, with that, I will yield to the gentlewoman from California. Uh, I, I did not ask for time, but uh, since the gentleman has yielded, I, am, uh, I will ask the unanimous consent to put into the record the um, provision of immigration law that has already fully covered this, along with the announcement um, that was recently made. And with that, I would yield back. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield the balance of my time to the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. I was hoping the gentlelady would respond to the question of if this was something the CDC was already saying should be done, why wouldn't we codify it in law? Uh, in, in order to ensure that it was done and done a uniform basis. That was, that was actually the question. It's the reason that I believe that no one should object to this, uh, particularly those who believe that the President's mandates are appropriate. And I thank the gentleman for yielding. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman yields back. Uh, are there any further? Okay, the question occurs on the amendment. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, there is a remembrance of September 11th beginning shortly, so we will take a recess so that members can attend. We will not take a separate lunch break. The committee will resume at 12.30 or immediately after. Now stands in recess.